Will technology serve to accelerate our evolution? Should it? Will we go beyond the limits of our senses? Do we want that? At the beginning of this millennium, the term Anthropocene was proposed as the name for a new era. The focus is on the humans who have become so powerful as designers that they unmistakably make their mark on biological, geological and atmospheric processes. In the future, this could also include the evolution of the humans themselves. Technologically, we will no longer just adapt the environment to our needs and protect ourselves from its influences, but we will begin to optimize ourselves. Prosthetically, genetically, nanotechnologically, pharmacologically and digitally. We are increasingly in a position to overcome our limits. We've been doing that for decades. Anyone who wears glasses, has a hearing aid or a cardiac pacemaker is already a cyborg in a way. The glasses of today, with which we correct a visual impairment, are the contact lenses of tomorrow with which we can zoom in on things far away, like with a camera, by simply thinking zoom. Genetic engineering could one day enable us to broaden our spectrum of vision and see the universe with new eyes. Or a whole new universe. Today's hearing aids will allow us to hear much more, much better and much farther in the future. The performance of our senses determines what we perceive and thus what we think and what we do. And also what and who we are. Such ideas of enhancement raise big ethical and moral questions. They trigger understandable concerns and fears. As always, they also create opportunities. The goal of such enhancement is not only to overcome physical deficits, but also to increase our performance capacity in such a way that it goes beyond the extent given us by natural evolution. Through wearables, we can easily let family members and friends participate in what we are experiencing right now from our perspective. Incitables like micro-robots can wander through blood vessels and diagnose and repair and heal. With augmented reality, we can project information as well as people, objects and phenomena into our perception at any time. They could be far away, have already passed away or never really existed. Sensory impressions and feelings can be digitally coded and neurologically reproduced within ourselves or even in other people's minds. And maybe one day, we can even pass on all our memories and experiences to our children, if they want them. Via networked prostheses and so-called exoskeletons, we can control the body movements of others, for example, to teach skills in sports and dance. We can transfer movements to virtual figures or physical robots, or conversely, give them control over our bodies. Next generation human machine interfaces will make it possible to control devices such as machines and drones just by thought. It's even possible today. In the future, we will increasingly experience other people, devices and objects as extensions of ourselves. Which of these possibilities do you want to use? And what are we allowed to do? It is quite probable that, in the course of the 21st century, humans will trigger their own next stage of evolution. Not through variation and selection, but through targeted enhancement. At least, that's the vision of the so-called transhumanists. Not everyone will want to take this step and not everyone will be able to do. The removal of the body's internal and external boundaries raises questions about human identity. To what point are we still human? What becomes of the principle that we're all born the same, at least biologically? Well, the gap between the rich, who can expand themselves and thus become more and more productive and powerful, and those who cannot afford it, grow bigger and bigger and become unbridgeable forever? Must there therefore be a right to unconditional enhancement? Or do we want to take the advantage of the early hour and legally ban all new enhancements? In any case, 
Now is the time to get used to this new reality and form convictions about what is good and what is right, what is harmful and what is wrong. Now what? What do you think about these questions? Are you looking forward to it? Or are you committed to prohibitions? What are your beliefs? How will your professional activity be affected? What will become possible? Which skills will become unimportant? What opportunities are there for your company, yourselves? And products, solutions for human enhancement? Think about it. Do you want to know more about the future? More than your friends and colleagues? And how to be a visionary leader? My next video is already in the making, so click subscribe and hit the bell too.